Hi, it's Viju Matthew, automotive editor at Rob Report, and we're here in beautiful Carmel Valley with a true legend. We're here with Gordon Murray, not only the designer of the McLaren F1, Formula One, a great, uh, a legacy that's unparalleled. So Gordon, thank you again for taking the time to chat. When did you first realize that designing and engineering automobiles was going to be your profession, it was going to be your passion? Well, not so much designing, but certainly cars and yeah. speed. My dad was a motor mechanic. And just after the war, people started building specials to go racing. And my dad used to work on those weekends. And I can remember as a six-year-old sitting on the bench and watching him assembling these racing cars. So Gordon, when you look back at your whole portfolio of work, all the projects that you've been involved with and, and done, what have been some of the most challenging ones and the ones that have taught you the most? At Brabham uh, with Bernie Eccleston, we had a tiny budget compared with the, the biggies, you know, like the McLarens yeah. and the Ferraris and even Williams, actually. That period taught me a lot on how to make a race-winning vehicle to beat the giants on a very low budget. I was chief designer at 25 and running the team, the technical side of the yeah. team, of course, at 27. Absolutely incredible. Is there a win, just looking back on that, period that stands out to you where either you didn't think it was going to happen and it did and you couldn't do it. I think the sweetest win always for somebody in my position particularly of that age is is the first Grand Prix. The stars lined up because it was South Africa right my country where I was born my mother and father were there the last Grand Prix win for Brabham before that had been Jack Brabham at Kyle Army. Wow. So it's sort of that was very special. Oh yeah like you said everything aligned it was it was yeah. meant to be on that yeah. one. So talking about the Brabham, the BT44, what are your thoughts when you see that car in action still today? How does it make you feel? It's, it's incredibly nostalgic. Of all my Grand Prix cars, that's probably one of my favorite. Of course, it was the first Grand Prix right. win, as we've said, but I think that was one of my favorite cars because it had a lot of innovation in it. To have all those innovative things in a motor car, it was very special in the day. To see it again now, yeah. racing, it, it's very, it has a very special place in my heart. Talking about another car with many firsts and, and innovations, the McLaren F1. We hear a lot of collectors talk about what's the next Holy Grail car, what's the next Ferrari 250 GT, and many of them all point to the F1 as being that. Yeah. Why do you think the F1 resonates with the collector car world so much and just with enthusiasts in general? I think it's on two fronts. I think, it, once again, a little bit like the, the 44, um, it had so many firsts. You know, it was the first all carbon fiber structure on it, the central driving position. It had the best V12 built at that point. It had other innovation in it. That's probably half the story. And then, of course, it went on to win Le Mans right. at its first attempt. And that you can never take away from a motor car. And I think that's combined over the years to make it, um, you know, a sort of a, an iconic motor car. So now let's talk about the next variant of it, the T50S. Talk me to this and what was your design well, learned, process on I it? I learned a very big lesson when I did the F1 because I said to the other shareholders and directors, when we're doing the, the McLaren F1, please don't even mention racing. And of course, then we had customers that virtually forced us to go right. racing. Right. And the racing car was a compromise. So this time I decided right from day one, that would be a clean sheet of paper road car and I'd have a different team of people and we'd do a clean sheet of paper track car. We've ended up with the ultimate road car experience and the ultimate track experience. Nicky drove for Brabham. In that time, he became a very dear friend and we were just setting out to start designing with the engineering team on this car and Nicky passed. I phoned the family and, and they were very keen that um, we, we do this. And I thought, that's it, just think it's a nice tribute. Yeah. What advice would you give to the next you, the young person coming to Quail maybe with their, with their parents and, and seeing these cars or seeing you, what advice would you give them if that's what they want to do? I think finding somebody like that these days is becoming more and more difficult, if not impossible, because people get specialized and pigeonholed. Right. It's just the way the industry's gone. Still, the advice I give all the youngsters is, A, get your hands dirty. If you're going to be a designer, you have to have practical knowledge. Yeah. Go and help somebody build a racing car, restore a car, right. go and get your hands dirty. Wherever you're working, whatever institution or company you're working in try and keep your ears and eyes open and try and get the bigger picture and don't get too compartmentalized and and those are the two things really you know I've been in this a long time and this industry has been very very good to me my shareholding almost in entirety 
is going into building a technical college. Oh, fantastic. Um, and that's going to be my legacy. And we're going to make sure that college is going to be bringing up engineers the way and, and workshop technicians the way we want them to learn. What a gift, what a gift to the industry. Well, Gordon, as are the, all of these cars and your whole body of work, and it's been a gift being able to chat with you. Thank you so Thank much you for your time. Much.